very good day to you. Um, this is a very special program that I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you. You know, the Bible is very clear when it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 19, that all creation is waiting with expectation for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. So I don't really know where you stand with the Lord at the moment. But my dear friend, this is a very serious message. Like never before, I've never in my life been so challenged as I am at the moment that we as believers need to stand up and be counted. Our nation of South Africa is 90% Christian. Maybe only in name. Maybe there are different degrees. Not maybe, we know there are. But every person who acknowledges Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior needs to stand up and be counted. You say to me, what do you mean by that, Angus? Well, at the moment, there is a, a mood going through our nation of fear, of desperation. People are angry. People don't know what to do. We need to stand up and say, thus says the Lord. Because in the heavenlies, nothing has changed. Okay? But we as ambassadors for Christ need to stand firm. We need to call those things that aren't as if they were. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. We need to turn our backs on negative talking. Right? Jesus Christ came to give us hope and love and joy and peace. And he wants to give it to us. We have it. We have just completed Easter. We know that on Friday the Lord died. On Sunday, miraculously, he was raised from the dead. We have evidence of that. If Jesus Christ is alive, what do we have to fear? There's a scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me, it shall quicken our mortal bodies. My dear friend, this is not the time to turn your back on the enemy. This is not the time to run away. This is the time to stand up and say, this far devil and no further. I want to read a beautiful scripture to you just to verify that it's found in Jeremiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 11. And many of you know the scripture. But today I want you to listen because it's as if God is speaking to us in 2010, in the month of April. Listen to this. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Did you hear that? Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you a future. Did you hear that, folks? A future and a hope. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Now, how, how clear is that? All of your heart. My dear friend, we need to stand together as believers in this nation. We are going to have a men's conference in less than two weeks. We are expecting no less than 400 thousand men. It will be the biggest men's get together, Christian men's gathering that this planet earth has ever seen. That's a fact. And it's not just for one meeting. It's for a whole weekend. It starts on Friday and it finishes on Sunday morning. And Sunday morning, women and children are welcome to come. And we are going to seek the Lord with all our hearts. And we are going to be watchmen of the house. We are going to be watchmen of the schoolroom. We are going to be watchmen of the business house, the farm. We are going to be watchmen of the nation. And we are going to blow the trumpet and we are going to call sin by its name. And we are going to lead by example. But we are needing to come together. We have to put our petty differences aside. I'm talking about doctrinal issues. We need to put them aside. We need to come as the people of God. I don't care whether you're a Baptist, a Presbyterian, a Methodist, a Pentecostal or a Charismatic. I don't think it means much to God either. What God is looking for today is for men and women who put their hand up and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. There is nobody in this nation that is looking for anarchy and bloodshed and destruction. We've had enough of that. Black, white, colored, and Indian people want peace. They want a future that they can work towards. They want a fair opportunity, everybody. And I think they should get it. And I believe our president is doing his best. That's all I'm saying. I'm not a politician. I'm not going down that road. He's already made a speech. He's called for calm. We need to stand. Brethren, if we stand up, we can put an end to this fear and this threat that's coming upon our nation. Martin Luther King said, in order for evil to abound, all that good people have to do is nothing. We've got to stop that. That's why we're having a men's conference in less than two weeks. Sir, you tell me you're going on a fishing trip. You booked it. I, I, I want to say something to you. And please, there's no condemnation, but I want to speak my heart. This is more important than a fishing trip. This is more important than having a weekend somewhere at the game reserve. Cancel it. Come and join us. Let us seek the face of the Lord. The Lord has promised us that if we search for Him with all our hearts, He's promised us that He will listen to us. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you. I'm going to say that again. You didn't get that, did you? Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 333. That's God's telephone number. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. Never in my life, and I'm now a man of over 60 years old, have I ever been so challenged, so excited, and so passionate for the things of God. I want to say something to you, my dear friend. I don't know where you are. You might be sitting in your house. 